we're going to talk about experimental probability. And that is actually doing some type of event, such as spinning a penny. So if I spin a penny, and I do that a whole bunch of times, that would be called an experimental probability. And what I would do is I would write down how many heads I got and how many tails I got. So that time I got a head. I did it again. This time I get another head. A head. I think I like it better when it used to be. Okay, there's a tails. All right, it used to say flip a coin. Now it's saying spinning. Okay, but let's say that a person did an experimental probability and they got six heads and they got 19 tails. And they want to know the probability of getting the heads out of the experiment. Okay, so it's going to be the probability of the event, the event is heads, getting the heads when spinning it, is going to be the, the number of times the event occurs, um, ways of being successful. And there were six heads, so six goes on top. Um, divided by the total number of trials. Well, the 19 was the tail, so I have to add 16, um, 6 plus 19, which is 25. That is 6 plus 19. Then I need to divide 6 by 25, and if you have a calculator and your teacher allows that, that will be quick. If not, it's 6 divided by 25. 25 won't go into 6, so let's add a decimal and a zero. 25 will go into 60. Well, 25 times 2 is 50, so I think it's going to have to be that. When I subtract, I get 10 left over. 25 won't go into 10, so bring down another 0. 25 will go into 104 times, so I have 0 0.24, which is 24%. If I do the Dr. Pepper rule and move it two places to the right. So about 24% of the time, I'm going to get a heads according to my experimental probability.